Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving the light for those who long have gone, guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of light, guiding the pilgrims through the night, over the mountains till the break of dawn. Into the land of perfect day, it will give up a lovely ray. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, beautiful, beautiful star of Bethlehem, star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawns. Give us the lamp to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope, the grace for the redeemed, the good and the blessed. Yonder in glory when the crown is won. Jesus is now the star divine. Brighter and brighter he will shine. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, beautiful, beautiful star of Bethlehem. Star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawns. Give us a lamp to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Amen. Amen. All right, if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 2. We're going to break our series in Mark. I'm going through the whole book of Mark, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We'll resume that tonight at 6 o'clock. So I know all of you coming back tonight, you can get in on the study of Mark, and uh, it'll be a blessing. Didn't those children do a great job? And our choir does a great job every Sunday. I appreciate them so much. Appreciate Brother Randy's leadership there. And uh, he got to teach Sunday school this morning, unfortunately. Miss Trudy's daddy's in bad shape in the hospital, and so she spent the night all night in the hospital, and so Brother Randy substituted for Brother Al. I know he did a good job on the Christmas story, and I want to continue that in Luke chapter 2. You know, Christmas ought to be a special time. Some people are against Christmas. I don't know why. I'm always for it. Amen? Aren't y'all for it? For Christmas? Amen? And I like that song with a message. I don't know how... Uh, uh, Y'all got the mics louder or something, but I heard the message is clearer this morning. I appreciate that because the message is what's important. I'll never forget when I was uh, just came to this town, uh, probably about three years after we started the church, uh, we were sitting up in McDonald's. And we was only one McDonald's in Dalton. We were just, you know, a little town then. Now we got three or four, don't we? Amen? Two, three. I don't know. We got a bunch of them. Amen? I go to McDonald's so much, i got arches in my back, amen, but anyway, uh, we love it, amen. But we were sitting there minding our own business, and uh, uh, one of these secular songs came on the intercom, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose, y'all know it, y'all know that one, okay, don't sing it, but anyway, uh, not right now, amen, I'm preaching, and, uh, and Jason there, Jason was about three years old, maybe, maybe younger, and he's just minding his own business, and he and he looked at uh, his mom and he said, Mom, uh, why is uh, Rudolph sick? And uh, she looked at him, what do you mean sick? He says, the song just said over the intercom, Rudolph had a very runny nose. And so uh, he really thought it was Rudolph had a very runny nose. It's not that, is it? Amen? It's shiny nose. Amen? 
like I have a shiny head. But anyway, uh, shiny nose. A uh, little boy one time wanted a bicycle for Christmas. That's all he wanted was a bicycle. And man, he kept on asking and asking and asking. And finally the parents said, hey, I'm tired of you asking about getting a bicycle. Why don't you just pray and ask God for that bicycle? So that night he began to pray and he prayed loud and he prayed louder and he prayed louder. He said, oh God, I want a bicycle. I want a real bicycle. I want a big bicycle. I want a red bicycle. He was loud, loud, just hollering loud. Finally, his mother came to the room and said, Hey, listen, uh, son, God's not deaf. And she looked, he looked at her and said, But grandmother is. Amen. Y'all get, that. Y'all get that later. Amen. All right. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. Amen. Luke chapter 2. Y'all get it. Grandmother was giving the bicycle. All right, good. Y'all with me now. Amen. Appreciate Brother Bobby. Appreciate Brother Robert. Appreciate Miss Abby. Appreciate Brother Andrew. I think Brother Andrew's the bouncer up there. I don't know what he is. Amen. But uh, they they never come in Sunday uh, Sunday church. They're always up there in the upper room ministering gladly, willingly. And I tell you what, it's a great junior church. You can tell these these uh, young people learn a lot, especially good songs like that. All right, Luke chapter two. Let's stay in all the Word of God. I'm going to talk about some shepherds this morning. Y'all heard about the shepherds? All right, we're going to preach on the shepherds. Okay, Luke chapter two, verse eight through seventeen. And I know I'm the only thing between you and eating. So I'm going to lay it on the line and I'm going to do it quick. Amen. And thank you for all of you that uh, contributed to this afternoon uh, because uh, your giving will touch and plow soil. Y'all remember the message a couple weeks ago? It'll plow soil. That's all I'm going to say. Amen. Verse 8 says that we're in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. It's very important where that field was keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And you would have been too. Amen? Children, you would have been afraid if a bunch of angels showed up in the darkness of the night. Look at verse 11. For unto you... And the angel said... I almost skipped the the greatest verse. "And, And the angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. You know what a manger is, children? It's a feed trough. That's all it was. Look at verse 13. And suddenly... There was with them angels, uh, with the angels, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now, that's a key word, go even into Bethlehem and see the thing which the, is come to pass which the Lord has made unto us unto us and they came with haste found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger an old feed trough and when they had seen it they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as was told unto them. You may be seated as I pray. Father, thank you for these young people and thank you for the parents. God, they're honored guests. I know that these young people are just so excited, thrilled that mom or daddy or both are here in the service with them. And Lord, I thank you for them coming and, and encouraging these young people on this Christmas service that we're having. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to listen from the youngest child to the oldest person in here, that we'd listen as if it's a message from God. And Lord, we pray it will be a message from God and not from just this man. Lord, please speak to hearts. Plow soil. God, cultivate it. Lord, use this time, Lord, to plant conviction in our hearts of how much we need you, how much we need you every hour. God, I know some people in this room are going through some terrible crises and 
and tremendous challenges. And God, during this Christmas season, I pray, dear God, that they draw upon the grace of God that saved them, that now will sustain them and help them in this time of need. So, Lord, thank you for the good choir specials. Thank you, God, for the good number of children here. And I pray, Lord, you'd speak through this preacher. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the Bible introduces us to a group of people called shepherds. Now, these shepherds were like cow hands. You know what a shepherd is, amen? They were the lowest rung of society of that day, and they didn't think anybody cared for them. And they were entrusted by God to come to the manger and witness something wonderful, Jesus being born in a manger. Now, folks, that's not just a little nativity scene. That's God coming to you. That's God coming to me. And I want to tell you something. I was just like one of those old shepherds. Uh, I didn't have anything to offer God. I was a son of a drunk, uh, didn't have much. But I want to tell you something. When Jesus saved me, at a year, uh, when I was 11 years old, he changed my entire life. And then about uh, uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago, uh, later, maybe it's 30, maybe 20, I don't know, I'm bad with time. My daddy got saved seven years before he died of cirrhosis of the liver. He got born again. And our whole family changed. I mean, everything changed. My daddy began to love mama like she ought to. He stayed up at night and made it through a meal and, and uh, talked to us and spent time with us. And I wanted to run away from home when I was a kid, but I got hungry and I came back after about two blocks. But I want to tell you something. Uh, when, I, when I went away in the ministry down in Claxton, Georgia, the fruitcake capital of the world, I wanted to come home and find my daddy reading the Bible, praying, staying up late at night, and hugging mama the next morning and saying, I love you. Because we never heard that until he was born again. See, you'll never understand the birth of Christ until you are born again. You need, you, listen, he was born into this world, not by the blood of man, but by the blood of God. And for, We learned that in Sunday school this morning. And I want to tell you something. He came to us when we couldn't come to him, and he chose these shepherds. I mean, they were just minding their own business outside Bethlehem. And that night it was tranquil, probably dark as, as could be, because it's usually dark at night. Say amen. And they were sore afraid. That means they were scared out of their boots. I mean, they were, I don't guess shepherds wore boots, did they? Sandals, scared, scared out of their sandals, amen. I mean, they were frightened, so afraid. And folks, I want you to see what happened when these disciples, or excuse me, these shepherds became disciples, when these shepherds became saved. I believe this is the first converts in the Christmas story. I believe this is where somebody gets saved. But folks, because being saved is you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you come to Him. And you not only come to Him, but you go back as whatever you are, a shepherd or whatever, and you're no longer the same. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things pass away, but all things become new. What I love about the Christian life is He gives you a new want to. I want to serve God. I want to sing about God. I want to be in church. God gives you a wholly new want to. He gives you a new appetite. He gives you a new desire. He, it, folks, what is planted in your heart is not what but who the Holy Spirit comes into your life and gives you a desire to serve Him, and that was the intended purpose as you were born. So you were born, Isaiah 43, 7, to glorify God. That's the bottom line. You weren't born to be rich. You weren't born to be famous. You weren't born to be uh, popular. You was born to please the Lord. Revelation 4.11 says all things were and are created for His pleasure. Now let me say this, you can only please God by faith. And folks, I want to tell you something, you're living beneath your God-given privilege if you're not saved. And folks, Christmas is the season to remember He was born into this world that you might be born into His world. First of all, I want you to see the shepherd's announcement. Look at verse 8. It says, they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock, by night. Folks, they were in a country called Bethlehem. You know, that was convenient for these shepherds because if they didn't get back to their flock, the wolves would get them. The lions would get them. And so God always sets up amazing situations for you to hear the gospel and come to the Lord. And folks, I want to tell you, just like uh, the, the thief on the cross, he happened to be dying next to Jesus. That was a very fortunate situation. God sets up amazing situations 
for men to hear the gospel. Then I see not only the field, but I see the flocks of the shepherds. Look at verse 8. It says they were abiding, watching over their flock. Now what flock? Well, it was a flock of, wasn't a flock of geese. It was a flock of sheep. It was lambs. And folks, being in Bethlehem, in the vicinity of it, most of those lambs were being raised for one thing. And that was to be a sacrificial lamb in the temple at Bethlehem. And do you get the drift, friend? Thank God the Lord makes no mistake. Folks, the, the Lamb of God chose some shepherds raising sheep for a sacrifice to betray what He would do. He is the Lamb of God. He, come, he came to this earth to give His life a ransom. Don't expect me to explain it. I can't trace God. I must trust God. And folks, I know this is that the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Somebody had to die, and Jesus took my death. Jesus took my rap. Jesus took my sin debt, and he paid it all at Calvary. So he had to be born into this world to go to Calvary and die in your place that you could be born into his world. What a favor. What a blessing. The Bible says in verse 8, the angelic announcement was given. So I see the... the uh, the uh, the field, and I see the flock, but I see the favor for these shepherds. Why these shepherds? I'll tell you why. It represents you and I. Folks, you know what you need to do to get saved? You need to be humble. You know, there's a lot of people shake their fists at God and say, God, I don't need you. Don't say that too much. You might stop breathing. Say amen. But I want to say this, friend. You need God. I need God. I want to tell you something. The church member that's been here every day of their life needs God. The preacher needs God. The song leader needs God. Say amen, Brother Randy. Uh, the every choir member needs God. We all need God. But folks, you need to admit that you need God. You need to admit you're a sinner before, before you can get saved. So he chose shepherds because he thought and he knew that they wouldn't shake their fists and say, listen, no, I'm a politician. I don't need God. I'm a preacher. I don't need God. I'm some rich dude. I don't need God. Here was humble, lowly shepherds that didn't even get a vote that, uh, that they were the outcasts of society, God comes to them. That shows there's a loving God that loves every one of us. And none of us deserve heaven. We all deserve hell. Say amen from the deacon to the preachers in here. Folks, we all uh, deserve to go to hell, but Jesus gives us heaven. You talk about a Christmas gift. Praise God, that's better than a bicycle. Amen, that's better than a house. That's better than a car that you get eternal life with Jesus Christ, and he pays for it. And so, folks, we see the favor of the shepherd. It's just the grace of God. You want to know how you spell Christmas? Children, you know how to spell Christmas? I'm a, you do? Well, I'm going to spell it different, okay? G-R-A-C-E. You say, that's a funny way of, of, of spelling Christmas. What's, it, what's the word? This little fellow on the third row said it. Grace, grace. You know what grace is? Grace is giving you something you don't deserve. That's like when your mom and daddy uh, buy you something you don't deserve. It's grace. It's a gift. It's wonderful, isn't it? Don't you wish they'd do more of it? Say amen. Come on. Shake your little head yes. Amen. All right. He's, he's amen and now, praise God, he's in it. But I'll tell you this, friend. The grace of God is God's riches at Christ's expense. Let me give you a verse that summarizes Christmas. One verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. You with me? Turn your Bible. We're not Bible, palm readers, we're Bible readers. Come on. If you read your palm, it'll just show you that you worked hard yesterday or you're getting old like me and got wrinkles. Amen. I'm not a palm reader, I'm a Bible reader. You know why I'm a Bible reader? 1,500 years, 44 different authors, 66 different books, and not one contradiction. Amen. And every prophecy about the birth of Christ and the life of Christ came to pass in minute detail. Micah chapter 5 verse 2 says this. It says that he'd be born in Bethlehem. Now folks, the first verse of that chapter that we're in back in Luke said he was born in Bethlehem. You know why? Because of taxes. They had to go pay their taxes. And after a donkey ride, that makes a woman have a baby pretty quick. Say amen. Praise God. No, it was the, it was the right time. No room in the end. Y'all have heard the little story, seen the plays, but it's more than a story. It's a message of salvation. Jesus came to you. 
in exact detail of what the Bible says. So if you want to get saved, you need to realize the Savior from the Bible. The Bible reveals the Savior. And look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, excuse me, verse 8, chapter 8, verse 9. For we know the, what's the next word? Grace. Say it with me. Grace. Say it again. Grace. Boy, these children are listening. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That ye through his poverty might be rich. Say amen right there. He was humble to be born in that manger, that old feed trough, that old stinking stable. What a pretty little nativity scene you see uh, going down the road. It was awful. It was stinking. I don't like stinking stables. I wouldn't want to be born in one, would you? I wouldn't either. And I'll tell you, friend, listen, God help us to realize these were humble folks that were favored. You know what favor means? Grace. God gives you something you'll never deserve. What a Christmas gift. Then I see the fear of the shepherd. Let's go back to our text. Luke chapter 2, verse 9. It says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. Folks, the cause of the fear was sudden darkness turned to light. Hey, friend, they were sore afraid. They were, they were brave and tough men. You know, cattle ranchers and shepherds are tough. they got to be. They're outside all the time. They're up all night taking care of the sheep. They were tough men. And, folks, I want to tell you something. We need to fear God. I don't care how tough you are. I don't care how well off you are. I don't care how much you think you know or how much I think I know. We need to fear God. You know what fear God is? It means reverence. That's why we come to church. That's why we sing these songs. That's why we do our best for Jesus. We fear God. We reverence God. Not fear that he's going to strike us dead any minute. That's afraid of God. I'm not afraid of God. I fear God. He is God. Folks, he, he came to us when we couldn't come to him. There is no ladder to heaven. There's only a cross. And then the, on, and there was a shadow of the cross over the cradle as some great artist painted. So we see the favor of the shepherd. We see the flock of the shepherds. But folks, we see the fear of the shepherds. I tell you what, it, it, today men don't fear God like they used to. I mean, I, when I was a kid, stores didn't even open on Sunday. That would be the end of the world. You couldn't go to Walmart on Sunday, children. I mean, restaurants didn't open. It was an old-fashioned day. I'm not saying go back to that, but I'm going to say this, friend. Don't put anything before God. I don't even have a chimney. Yeah, I do, but it's too skinny for him to come down, to, come down it. And by the way, I blocked it off, and it's a gas logs, buddy. That'd be a hot one if you come down on that one. Don't put anything or anyone before God. Now, parents, don't get nervous now. I'm not going to do anything here, but I'm going to tell you this. There's a lot of options around Christmas. Say amen. Can I be kind? There's a lot of things we'd be doing this morning. But I want to tell you something, friend. Fearing God means you know God is God that he created you. I don't believe for a second, children, that you came from a one-cell amoeba that flipped over and became a tadpole, and the tadpole became a monkey. And the monkey got so intelligent, he showed up at Shaw running the Shaw Industries over here. If monkeys made men back then, why don't monkeys make men now? I've never been down to Grant Park and saw a man or a little baby or a little baby girl, like some of you little sisters, hatched out of a monkey. Folks, we didn't come from monkeys. We came from God. Say amen. Amen. I like the way this guy's listening on third row. Praise God. He might be a future deacon. He's at the nod and amen and praise God. He ain't got over that gift yet. Amen. But listen, today, men do not fear God like they should. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Then I want you to see second. Uh, I just want you to see real quick, and I won't be long. I promise. I want you to see the shepherds received the message. Look at verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe. No, excuse me. For unto you, that's personal, is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Underline that word, children. Saviors. 
which is Christ the Lord. Now folks, He's not a Lord, He's the Lord. There's not a way, there's only one way. You say, that's awful narrow-minded. Yeah, I'm so narrow-minded, a mosquito can land on my nose and kick both eyeballs out. That's narrow-minded, say amen. My wife says I'm hard-headed and narrow-minded. Don't, don't ask her no more. But I want to tell you something, friend. I believe the Bible. And the Bible says he's the way, the truth, and the lie. No man come to the Father but by me. Jesus came to you when you couldn't come to him. And I want to tell you something. Here's the message. He was a helpless Savior. It says a babe. You ever had a baby get up and go to work one morning? Have you ever seen a baby drive a car? That's why I love you bus drivers and van drivers. It's wonderful that you have somebody drive you to church. Amen? I tell you what, have you ever, have you ever seen a, a baby carry on a great conversation? No, a baby's helpless. Just a babe. Our Lord came to this earth as a helpless little baby lying in a feed trough. Good night. What humility. And then he was a humble Savior. He was in a manger. And that shows you the grace of God that he that ruled the world, owned the world and created the world, became a little helpless baby. And born in a little old feed trough in a stinking stable out back in the, because the innkeeper, boy, he made a mistake, the innkeeper would not give him a room. I bet if a king showed up, he'd make room for him. Well, let me say, that morning a king did show up, he just didn't recognize him. And folks, it was a helpless Savior. He was a humble, humble Savior. Why? Because he came to these lonely shepherds saying, I love everybody. He came to a despised tax collector named Matthew and made him one of his disciples, wrote the first book of the... New Testament. He came to little Zacchaeus. Remember that story? Zacchaeus, wee little man, come down from that tree. Y'all remember that one? Y'all ain't got that far yet? Okay, well, we'll get there. Amen. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, but he was a crooked little man, and nobody liked him. But Jesus said, I'm going to your house. Oh, folks, Peter was a loud mouth. Maybe like that little boy praying loud, give me a bicycle. Folks, the dying thief didn't deserve salvation and folks the reason Jesus humbled himself is because you need to humble yourself and I need to humble myself I got three fingers pointing back at my heart as I'm pointing one at yours we need to humble ourselves and realize that Jesus didn't come to this earth for a vacation he didn't come to this earth just because he didn't have anything to do he came on a mission and that mission was to give his life a ransom a payment for your sin debt he came to seek and to save the sinner like me and you. And folks, it's so wonderful that the Savior, the Savior, what a picture, the Savior humbled himself. And the shepherds humbled themselves and took off to the manger and they found Jesus, a baby. He could have come as King of kings and Lord of lords, but he came as a baby. He was humble and he was Helpless. You know, such a dichotomy is a great comparison of humility and the power of God. Who, who, he who became weary, yet he's our rest. He who paid tribute or taxes, yet he's our king. He who was accused of being possessed by demons, yet he cast them out. He who wept, yet he wipes away our tears. He who was sold for 30 pieces of silver, yet he came to redeem you and I and our sin debt that we could never pay. He was the lamb to the slaughter, yet he himself is the great and good and coming shepherd. And surely as he came the first time, he's coming the second time, and I believe it's soon. Have you read the paper lately? Have you heard the newscast lately? I'm going to tell you something, friend. All the signs of the time are here, and there's not one sign that needs to be fulfilled for the rapture. That's when we're caught up instantly. We'll be with the Lord. And there's seven years of tribulation, Revelation 6 through 18, and you'll be left behind if you don't get saved. 
As sure as he came the first time, he's coming the second time. And I believe he's coming soon. He who died on the cross, yet by his death, destroyed death forever. I'm looking forward one day of being in, my, in heaven with my mom and my daddy, my loved ones. And folks, the reason I'm looking forward to it is because heaven's a far better place. Heaven's a lot better than this old world. There'll be no woe, no depression, no, no want in heaven. There'll be joy and laughter and love and light. I love that song about the light. That's what I'm preaching on tonight. So the shepherds received the message. The shepherds not only received the message, they responded to it. And you never, hey listen, I want to tell you something. You can hear a message and not respond to it. You can, you can hear a message and not receive it. Look at verse 15. It says, and it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them unto heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Look at verse 16. And they came with haste. They came with haste. I mean, they left the sheep immediately and with haste. The Bible says they, they came with haste found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now folks, the shepherds made their way quickly. Don't Notice the fastness of the seeking. They didn't wait around to some convenient season to get saved. They didn't wait around till they felt like it. Uh, they, they didn't wait around for a better day. Or till they're all their ducks lined up, or till they got everything straight. Now that makes about as much sense going to the hospital when you get well. You go just as you are. Say amen. You go just as you are, just as I am. You don't wait to get better. And folks, I want to tell you, the shepherds came, and they were the first converts. And folks, faith that obeys is faith that seeks the Lord, just as He is. On his terms. Shepherds truly believed. They heard the message. And they exercised faith by getting up. And coming to the manger. And meeting Jesus. That was a life changer right there. And folks I want to tell you something. Had the shepherds stayed on that hill. Shook their fist at God. And said I don't need God. I'm a tough shepherd. I don't need God. I've got everything fine. And I got my duties. I got my job. I got my this, I got my that, they'd be in hell today burning because of their unbelief. See, the only sin that sends us to hell is unbelief. They didn't believe, if they hadn't believed the word. And so, folks, um, they received, but they responded. And then verse 17 says they repeated it. It says, and wh whom they had seen it, and when they had seen it, they had made known abroad the same which was told them concerning this child. Folks, these shepherds became evangelists. Folks, they became uh, excited, and it was concerning the child, not Mary. You don't get saved by worshiping Mary. They didn't get saved by worshiping the manger, some religious house. You don't get saved by going into a church building. I think you ought to go in a church building because you love the people in the building, and you love the God that's building it. But folks, salvation is not religion. Salvation is not some orthodox thing that we go through every Sunday. It's a relationship. They met the child who was not just a child. He was God in flesh. God with us. Emmanuel. The source of the message, it was heavenly. Look at verse 17. And when, they had, when they had seen it, they made known abroad that which was told them concerning the child. Told them by who? The angels. It's a heavenly message. It's the word of God. These angels spake God's message. It's the gospel. What's the gospel? The death, burial, and resurrection. Say amen. And that's the only way anyone can get saved. What's the subject of the message? Wasn't Mary. Wasn't the manger concerning this child. What's the scope of the message? Made known abroad. You know what that's saying? Anybody can get saved. Anyone. I thank God I got saved when I was just a little child. 
I was a nervous wreck with what I lived in. But God saved me and gave me peace, gave me purpose. And even children gave me power not to be Superman. I can't fly. I can't jump buildings in a single bound. Not even Batman. I can't be that. I, but I can be a man of God. And I can be a man that can say no to sin and yes to the Savior and have victory over myself. And that takes a bigger man than it does Superman. Say amen. It's saved by the grace of God. The subject is concerning the child. Then the steadfastness of it was, friend, in verse 13, they just repeated the choir. He said, and suddenly there was with them angels, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God, saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Folks, I want to tell you what it is. The bottom line of the message is the glory of God. Now, don't get saved this morning and just go to heaven, which is a pretty good place to go. I'd rather go there than hell. Don't get saved just so what you can get out of it. That's like, let's make a deal. It ain't no deal. It's a divine gift, as you say. But get saved for the glory of God. Because that's what God created you for, His glory. Isaiah 43, 7. And folks, the only ultimate reason for living is His glory. God is worthy of your praise. God is worthy of your little old life and my little old life. And the shepherds found out it's glory to God in the highest. It's peace on earth. It's found in the goodwill of God. And when they came back, they were different shepherds. <laughs> they went back to their duties. They didn't want those sheep to get astray. And they raised them up and they bought them. And they took them to the temple and they pierced their little hearts. And the blood flowed pointing to what Jesus would do for them. See, those shepherds had an insight. They'd seen many lambs slain at the temple. And folks, I want to tell you, that's the reason Jesus came. Jesus loves you. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. But Jesus loves me, this I know, because he came. And he proved it so. Because he came and was born in a little manger. That I could be born into his kingdom and go to heaven when I take my last breath. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. But you'll never have it without the author and finisher, Jesus Christ. He is the reason for Christmas. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for using this story, which is a true story, inspired Word of God, about these shepherds. Lord, I want to personally thank you for them coming to you and not just hearing the message, but receiving it. And Lord, proved it by coming to Jesus and worshiping Him and then going back and glorifying and praising you with the rest of their shepherding lives. Lord, thank you for the change that you make in our hearts. Well, I don't know where I'd be today, but I sure wouldn't be a pastor of a church if I wasn't saved. And I sure wouldn't be a father of four saved children if I wasn't saved. And Lord, I wouldn't be happy. I sure wouldn't be holy. Lord, I wouldn't have purpose and I wouldn't have peace if I hadn't got saved. So Lord, if I don't get a thing for Christmas, I hope I do get something. But Lord, if I didn't get a thing, the gift of yourself is enough. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for the very reason for this season. It's not some folklore. It's not some story. It's not some shopping trip. It's not what we get. Lord, it's what's available, the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for these folks here to listen. They've listened so well. Thank you for the children. They've listened so good. They've been so good to sit still and, and Lord, be attentive to the message. And I was, I'm, so, I'm so happy for them. But Lord, I pray that you speak to heart as you spoke to my heart about the gift of Christmas. 